What is up? I'm Moana Turtle, and today we're going to be talking about one of the decks that I've been facing a bunch of times in PTCGO that has been so annoying to play against. That is the Pidgeotto Control deck. So, uh, my thoughts on this deck is like 60%, like just pure spite. I despise this deck. I hate, I don't like facing it. It's just not that fun to play against, and it takes forever. Uh, but then 40% is, you know, like. This is a real strategy, it's legit, it works, and it's probably fun to play, and so, you know, 40% respect, but more, <laughs> more spite than that. <laughs> Alright, so let's take a look at some of the core pieces of the deck. We're going to start with Pidgeotto and Jirachi. Uh, so Pidgeotto itself obviously, does, obviously doesn't need to evolve from Pidgey. Um, we're not going to worry about Pidgey, but one important detail, it has 60 HP. I think there's another one in standard that has 50, but 60 or 60 or below is really important. Uh, Pidgeotto, air mail. Don't worry about his attack, it doesn't have an attack. Air mail, once during your turn, you may look at the top two cards of your deck, put one of them into your hand and the other one on the bottom of your deck. That equals a free draw. Not only is it a free draw, but you look at two um, and you pick whatever one you like. So free card draw, awesome. And then Jirachi, uh, this is probably very familiar, most people are familiar with Jirachi. Once in your turn, if this is your active Pokemon, so it doesn't need to be in the active. Look at the top five cards in your deck, take a trainer from it, add it to your hand, shuffle the rest into your deck, and then Jirachi falls asleep. Um, so these are kind of like the, the core engine of the deck. Equal, so Jirachi, uh, add trainers, draw a trainer. Uh, Pidgeotto, draw a card of the top two, whatever one you want. So. What we have here is tons of card draw, but you know, turtle, this doesn't actually do anything. And also it's not that easy to set up necessarily. Well, we do have some support for getting things all set up. We have a bunch of stuff. Professor Elm, again, that 60 HP is very relevant. Search your deck for up to three card Pokemon with 60 HP or less, reveal them, put them in your hand. So this you can basically tutor up all the Pidgeys you need and you can even toss in a Ditto. So there's five targets for that. And getting those online are vital. So even though you maybe only need to use this once, you know, a four of might be okay. Uh, Acrobike, just general card draw. And after you use Professor Elm once, you know, you can Acrobike it away. Custom Poke gear just to bring out all your supporters. There's a more supporters than what we're showing. And then Cynthia, just a good way to cycle through cards if you don't have what you need. So that's some support just to get that core engine online. But here comes the painful part, the part that's gonna create this control prism where our, our, our opponent or specifically at the time, me, you really can't do anything. So, all right, what is the whole point of this deck? We are going to prevent the opponent from doing anything from doing attacks or even having cards in their hand let's take a look the probably in my opinion like the core one is crushing hammer this will prevent your opponent from doing stuff flip a coin if heads discard energy card from one of your opponent's pokemon pretty straightforward super annoying but you know what there is a 50 percent chance it misses uh so that can't be our only weapon mars Mars was never on my radar until now, to be honest. Draw two cards if you do discard a random card from your opponent's hand. Some card draw, plus you discard your opponent, uh, make your opponent discard a card. Mm, that's very good. If you really want to uh, take a, attack their hand, you can use Jesse and James. Obviously, this is a double-edged sword, though. Uh, but man, do I appreciate that art. That art is just perfect. <laughs> and luckily, we pull like a hundred, like, we have like eight of them that we pull from Hidden Fates. So this is kind of like your attack, you know, so far the two Pokemon, all the Pokemon that we showed off, like none of them actually attack yet. Uh, and we're going to be doing our damage through cards like these, again, attacking their hand and preventing them having enough energy to knock out your Pokemon. And then there's one more that when I first read this card, I was like, what is this for? That is Chip Chip Ice Axe. If anyone plays Magic Gathering, this is, is like a souped up um, Jace's Fate Seal. Look at the top three cards of your opponent's deck and choose one of them. They basically get to keep that one, put the other two on the bottom. So stuff that we probably don't want your opponent to draw is, you know, a welder. Maybe if they don't have enough energy, don't give them an energy. Uh, don't give them those card draw cards that they need. Just kind of just stall them out. So Chip Chip Ice Axe, surprisingly annoying just to stall your opponent uh, so we can really lock them in place. But Turtle, what if, you know, it took me a while to set this up. They got their Mewtwo online with 
you know, three energies or maybe the two just to use Sogaleo's attack. Maybe they have Reshizard with, you know, three, four energies so they can start burning stuff out. One thing about Reshizard though is they can't really use Outrage. Well, they can use Outrage, but it's going to be two turn kills because we're not damaging you. Um, so, you know, you're going to need three plus uh, for Reshizard. And then let's say you're, you get there, your opponent gets there, boom, Articuno. Um, Articuno also in Hidden Fate, so you can show off a shiny. Although, this Articuno art is like the same light color that almost this could, if you told me this is the shiny, also a shiny, like I would believe you. Legendary Ascent. Uh, we've seen this effect kind of before with Tepu Koko. Um, Heat Train kind of has like half of it as well. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench during your turn, you may switch it to your active and then you can move some energy to it as well. We only need one. Alright, so this is the first Pokemon that we actually might attack with. So, point there is you don't need that many energy in this deck. Because all we're going to use is Cold Crush GX. So like, alright, my Reshizard is final line, my Mewtwo got some energy, got some stuff in the discard to use, and then Cold Crush. Yeah, start all over. Remove all your energy. When you start putting some back on, I have some hammers just waiting. And we're just going to reset the board energy-wise. So... Articuno can just come in and kind of like stall things even further and then we have other kind of like stall tactics so you know we have to set up and we'll probably take some our opponent will probably take some knock or get some knockout take some prize cards uh, so obviously we're going to have a couple reset stamps um, and we're kind of reset stamp uh, proof we're, we're protected from reset essentially because we probably won't be getting any knockout so that's another thing is the reset stamp battle is only one way. They can do it technically, but we'll be drawing six cards. It's like, you're gonna Cynthia me. Or, yeah, exactly. And then obviously we'll have Custom Catcher. Custom Catcher was like, oh well, yeah, Custom Catcher makes sense. It's just such a good card, but I feel like it plays a very different role in this deck because, you know, again, we're trying to limit how many cards our opponent has in their hand and limit how many energies they have on the board. So what we're not switching out to knock out a Pokemon, we're switching out so that they can't do anything. So we're gonna take the uh, Pokemon that has super high retreat costs and high attacks that, you know, they won't be able to get the energy on there because of the Mars, Jesse and Chains and Crushing Hammers. So Custom Catcher, obviously a winner, but for a very different reason, which is very interesting to me. And then of course, for any deck, uh, you do need Power Plants. Just Mewtwo's too strong right now. Um, so anything you can do to slow that down. All right, so we have a lot of these cool mechanics coming in play, but you know what? Since I'm not taking any prize cards, or you're not taking any prize cards, and you're drawing all these cards through Pidgeotto, through Jirachi, you're going to deck yourself before your opponent. And there is an easy way around that, and that is Oranguru. With resource management, which says, put three cards to your discard pile at the bottom of your deck in any order. So come late game, like, we're just going to do that, cycle through the cards, uh, bring those up through with Pidgeotto or whatever supporters we need. And the beauty here is it only costs one colorless energy. In comes Recycle Energy. You can get away with only one of these in your deck and is the only energy you'll ever need for your Orangaroos. That's very convenient and very efficient. So, so far we have two attacks. The cold uh, Articuno GX attack, which costs one water energy, and then Oranguru resource management, which takes one colorless energy, and you can use recycle energy. Super mana are uh, energy efficient, which means that the chance of Jirachi missing is very low. And then you use Pidgeotto to quick continue draw cards. And lastly, we're going to add some cards to just enable everything, kind of amplify things. We're going to add, or we can add ulti surge so not only do we have really strong supporters that are annoying but we can use multiple of them titan liza is also pretty good it's kind of like cynthia you know you get that uh kind of cycle through your deck but it's only five cards but the added ability of switch your active pokemon you know it has a built-in switch which is useful because we don't have that many energy so anytime we do need to switch maybe it's to bring out the jirachi back in uh, or bring out the oranguru for resource management you know 
we don't have a lot of energy to waste there. And then lastly, pal pad. So all these supporters just keep coming. So pal pad, put the cards back in the deck. Resource manager, put the cards back. In. And all these decks just limit your opponent from doing anything. Uh, and then before you know it, like you are completely locked out. Uh, like I said, I more so despise this deck than respect it because when you face it, you know, it's just, it's not an enjoyable time. So, like, I'm not super serious on PTCGO. Oh, I make tons of mistakes and I'm just kind of there to have fun. And when it's going to take like 30 minutes, you know, I actually don't think I've ever won against this deck yet. Uh, but even if I did, like, it just takes so long. It's a grueling battle. It's not that enjoyable for myself. So, um, yeah, I, I will say again, 40% is just respect for this deck and uh, appreciation of how it works um, because it is really cool. And um, but yep, more so, I just despise this thing. Uh, anyway, so that's it for today. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on this kind of video. Um, I like the idea of doing these kinds of things, but I want to start with this one because I feel very strong. <laughs> This deck is so annoying. But uh, yeah, let me know what your thoughts are down below. And as always, guys, like, comment, and subscribe all down below. I'm Wanna Turtle, and I'll catch you guys next time.